All right. So back to blowing it up. <laughs> Sounds very masculine too. Exactly. Oh, I'm not very good at doing a blowing up sound. <laughs> 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 that was a blowing up sound if you wanted to know. <laughs> How do some couples continuously elevate their passion? Is there truly only one perfect person for us? Or maybe what we practice and how we think will ultimately nurture or destroy our relationship. Crank up the volume while we dive into the depths of love, passion, and sex to uncover simple concepts that will both surprise you and transform your life forever. Welcome to Intimacy Exposed. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 25 of Intimacy Exposed. I'm your host, Crystal. And co-host, John. Welcome, everyone. Last episode was all about what it looks like to be an emotionally intelligent man and was mainly guided by John. It's true. Great job. Why, thank you. (laughs) Some of the main points. Why don't you tell us some of the main points about uh, last episode, babe? We dove into a bit of a history lesson as far as what men's roles in a relationship have looked like in the past and what they look like now and, you know, some characteristics that I believe define what a man is and how that role has changed over time and what we can do in order to create a more emotionally intelligent man, somebody who embraces the power, the wisdom, the strength and grace of the feminine. Yeah, and so for today's episode, we're going to be specifically speaking about the feminine, which could either be a man or a woman, but we're talking about femininity down to the core of your being. And a lot of us can label a feminine man as having something to do with sexuality, and that's not the case. You can, we all display feminine and masculine traits, but with down to your core, like right down to who you are from the beginning, like tear away everything else, who you are down to the core, that's what we're talking about. First off, it's imperative to get practicing the identification of emotions if you want to be an emotionally intelligent person. Hey babe, why don't you tell me some of your biggest surprises that you went through when evolving into an emotionally intelligent man? The biggest one for me specifically, and I don't know if anybody else resonates, but I I learned I wish I could say I learned quickly, but I did learn over time that the world is not black and white. And it is a little bit easier in some regards when you view it as black and white. It's also much harder and colder and it leaves a lot out, a lot of situations that are maybe not an extreme one to the left or to the right end up having to fall into a camp because it's either black or white. So that was a big one for me. Another one was the ability to release emotions, to actually process through situations and not just not just have them, you know, pent up and and kind of just dwell inside of you and I was never really a, a really resentful person or held on to grudges, but if you don't process those emotions, those feelings, they they build up in some front. Some people maybe they stress eat, quote unquote. Maybe other people chew their nails. Maybe other people don't sleep. Maybe other people break out in hives or rashes. Whatever it is, you know, that has to come some way in some fashion. So being able to identify with my emotions and and really process and work through situations helped me immensely. Yeah, it was a pretty cool transformation. Yeah. I found it quite interesting at the beginning of our relationship how John didn't quite, he didn't really identify with too many emotions, period, when I met him. He, we've spoke of this before on an episode, but John could list about a handful of emotions that he believed people ultimately experienced. And me, on the other hand, I have produced a long list of emotions and been able to tell what I felt and what others did too. And I felt like I could read other people quite well. I don't know if it had anything to do with working with children and seniors throughout my years. I worked in the service industry and had a love for providing great customer service. So maybe I had to learn to read people, but maybe it also had to do with my femininity. I'm not quite sure. With me being able to identify emotions, it didn't mean that I had all the tools to be emotionally intelligent. 
Um, I would do things like shut down. I would always think about myself and what I needed in times of stress, opposed to what John may have needed during an argument. And something that I'm definitely working on still, I'm working on all of these still, but definitely right now, being able to identify the things that John did wrong in an argument, that's really easy. But being able to actually identify my own responsibility in our disagreements, it's it's been difficult for me to, you know, come by, but I'm working on it and it's, you know, it's quite humbling actually. Now to parallel what John was talking about in the last episode, Let's identify the role that the feminine has played in a relationship throughout history because it's always helpful to see where we've come from in order to move forward effectively. As an aside, I just want to do a little explanation of the feminine and masculine energies that we've been talking about. And we've been discussing this in quite a few episodes already. We tend to use the word masculine and feminine in the relationship opposed to men and women. We do this on purpose and we do it for a very good reason. We use these terms because there must be an opposite energy in a relationship to attract and keep two people together with chemistry or a spark, you know, like kind of like a magnet. You need two opposite polar energies. The, a relationship can consist of two women, two men, or a man and a woman, but there must be a masculine and a feminine in order for there to be an attraction long term. We all display both masculine and feminine, like I was saying, but you are truly only one of these energies to your core. Now, just to chime in with what she's saying, because it's, I don't want people to confuse this with your values. Now, your feminine and masculine energy, that's, that's who you are. You know, that's probably not likely going to change through your life, but your values can. And the order in which your values get displayed can also change. It requires much more conscious effort, but just understand that you might have two people who value completely different things. That doesn't mean that they're going to attract, but it's their energy that she's talking about. Yes, like exactly. There's many ways for you to be opposite of your partner, but definitely what we're talking and targeting here is the energy of masculine and feminine acting as like a magnet. Now, Let's take a trip down memory lane and look at some historical roles that the feminine has played in the relationship. It's definitely common knowledge that women over the past many centuries were expected to stay home and not work. And if a woman was to gain employment outside the home, she was often expected to give up her job to be a wife and a mother. Now, there were some very monumental shifts in this typical role for a woman. Some of the most influential to our present time were the First and Second World War. Men were called away. And it left a gap in not only the home, but also in the working world. Not to mention things like war industries, like munition factories that demanded production to fuel the war. And women that were left behind were needing to fill those roles. As women shifted into this role, it meant they not only had to transition into a working position, but they also continued the same responsibilities in the home regarding maintaining a household, raising children, And they did all of this with no support from their partner, obviously, because they were out at war. Now, not only did they not have the support, but there is no communication. This would have been a really difficult time for relationships. We have no idea in modern day what that is even like to have your partner working on the other side of the world or being pulled away and actually not having communication with it. You know, like you might come across that once in a while when people are in remote areas, but it's really uncommon. We all have heard of the baby boomer generation, meaning that when men returned home from war, there was a little bit of catch up sexy time to be had, obviously. So this led to a giant baby boom and men for the most part resumed their positions in the working world. Yeah. What is it? Birth rates skyrocketed, but I bet you like factory production productivity went through the floor for the next <laughs> few days or right? weeks or months. <laughs> so this led to a baby boom and men for the most part resumed their positions in the working world. Now, of course there's a lot of great detail that I'm leaving out of this story. But let's think about how this shifts women back into the home while men take back many of the jobs that they left behind. When I think of this historical time, 
I feel the need to level up with masculinity to prove that we are just as deserving for those jobs as well. And although I don't believe that as the feminine, we need to view this time in that kind of light, I often wonder if it's where that um, quote unquote, I'm an independent woman comes from. Like, don't get me wrong. I love independence and episode four describes my experiences more clearly in that. But the pull to battle up against the masculine by becoming more masculine ourselves does a disservice to our femininity. And I'll describe what true femininity looks like very soon. Yeah, you can't you can't solve a problem using the same tools that created the problem. And I'm not saying that masculinity or femininity are, are problems, but going head to head with a mask masculine versus masculine it's not it's not going to end well yeah it's basically going to turn into a giant ufc fight <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> now being an emotionally intelligent feminine means much more than knowing if you're happy frustrated discouraged and so on coupled with the ability to identify what your partner or anyone else for that matter might also be feeling this is being emotionally competent the intelligent part comes from taking the quality you were gifted with, your femininity, and using it to connect with someone, de-escalate situations, and soften the rough exteriors of others. The qualities you exude when you're successful and being able to utilize them when you're stressed or hurt or when things aren't going your way, that's when you're going to reach emotional intelligence. When things get tense, we tend to break down and then we act with the lesser successful part of ourselves. It's quite easy to see if you go through a situation where you come head to head with your partner, take some time and look back at it after and see the, is that the same way that you deal with situations that are going well? I'll bet you they're not. That's very elegantly put. I like that. Well, thank you. A couple of questions I have for you all. How do you feel when you succeed, when everything falls into place, when everything is going right, the sun is shining a specific way, the stars align, and your hair does exactly what you want it to do? In these situations, how do you act? What qualities do you exude? I'm thinking of my own. I exude confidence, empathy, positivity, and kind of a flowing like my personality just kind of flows out of me. It's I'm not really thinking about it. And have you ever noticed that when you're having a great day at the office or when your partner and you are just jiving in every good way, it's easy to be feminine. It's as if it flows out of you naturally. You Some of the things that you might notice is you use many words to describe your day. <laughs> and John and I kind of giggle at this because the amount of words that what I might use to describe a situation is usually gr far greater than what he would use. Yeah, and, and that's that just that's just reflective of you know me being a mask strong masculine and her being a strong feminine. In fact, before this podcast, you know I was just reviewing some notes and kind of topics um, of what we we're going to discuss, and I read it all, read it all, read it all, and I said one word: cool. And then I followed it up with some more because as I paused after I said, cool, to me, that was like, awesome, really well done. I got all I need. And then I was like, wait a second, I'm not the only one here. Crystal might think that uh, that's like short and abrupt and not fulfilled and maybe that she didn't do a good job or something. So I actually added some more notes or sorry, I added some more information and details to the notes right afterwards, knowing that my partner is very feminine. <laughs> All right, so we use more words to describe our day. <laughs> That's okay. It's, it's so true, though. Yeah, but it's, a, it's about knowing your partner and knowing who they are because I could have just said cool, and if I didn't know that she's very feminine, I didn't understand her, and she didn't understand me, she might you know, internalize that as like, well, does he not like it? it you know, did I not do a good enough job? Is he mad at me? Is there something else going on? Yeah, and I bet I actually know this about myself and I know this about you is that if I came home from work and say you and I would have had like you know a conversation that didn't go well and I came home from work and told you work was fine I'm pretty sure you'd be like 
I don't think that everything is fine. <laughs> that's a huge red flag. That's like, no. you know. Not the word fine. Okay, so I'm going to actually scratch the word because there's a big stigma with that word. If I said everything is just peachy. If you said everything was peachy, you've never used the word peachy. I'd be a 95-year-old woman. <laughs> yeah, and I think you'd be p- pinching my cheeks as you said it. <laughs> In fact, the first time I've ever heard you say the word peachy was 30 seconds ago on this podcast. <laughs> Okay, so there's a lot of issues with that. We're going to move on. (laughs) We're going to move on. So another thing you might notice if you are a feminine is that you tell your partner information that he or she does not even need to know to understand the story you're describing, but you're loving talking to them, so it doesn't matter. Do you want to give an example of this for the listeners out there? Are you talking about berry markers? Yes. (laughs) So, okay, so I'm going to try to summarize this in a really quick example. I can help you. Okay, well, why don't you do it? Just think of my mom. Oh, man. Cindy? Cindy has berry markers. Well, all all feminines have berry markers, but but my mom has... She's got a bag. She's got a bag of berry markers. She's got a field of berry markers. (laughs) So, berry markers, really quickly. So, berry markers are... When, for example, I'm telling John, hey, when you're at the grocery store, can you pick up spaghetti sauce? No, no, no. I do not stop there. I ask him if he can pick up a spaghetti sauce that is on the second shelf from the bottom because the bottom shelf has way too much sugar in it. And the middle shelf, the one that's just above it, has uh, just a really tart taste. And I need him to pick up the one that has the purple jar label, not the white one, because the one is calorie wise and it's got full of all of this other stuff that's like diet food. And I tell him all of these things and we call them berry markers. They're a little bit of a map to show him how to get to where I need him to get to. But if I didn't tell him all of those, John would go find the first bit of spaghetti sauce he could find. Maybe one broke on the floor and he would scrape it up into his hands and bring it home (laughs) for me. Like I have to, you know, that's called berry markers. He doesn't need them, but I give them all out. And maybe it's a successful grocery shopping trip. Yeah, and and those are berry markers that you do have to remember because I want to succeed and I want to get the correct pasta sauce. But for the for the listeners out there, when this is part of a story, berry markers oftentimes the other person you don't have to remember them. And and I'm going to I'm just going to say men and women right now cuz it's just easier to summarize, but please understand that masculine and feminine it's different. And I'm sure that there's listeners out there who have a partner who goes into great detail in stories. We'll say that. And the other partner is listening and their head is just boiling because they're so confused and overwhelmed and they're trying to remember everything and their eyes are getting big and big and big and they're starting to get frustrated because they think that they have to remember every little detail. You don't. You really don't. And if you want proof of this, don't listen to us. The next time this happens and your partner's going into detail about a story and you're starting to feel that 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 voice inside your head that is like I'm getting frustrated I'm getting overwhelmed that's about the time that you stop listening and that's not okay so pause for a second and just lean in gently and touch your partner on the hand or touch them on the shoulder or something and say hey babe and they'll pause and say do you want me to remember all these things or do you want me to just be present and listen to your story and what do you think they would say well, it might catch them off guard if you don't ask a question like that usually. But if you're genuine, I believe that they would say, I just want you to be present. I'm just, you know, yabbering about my day. I just want to tell you everything. Absolutely. The one thing that you don't want to do, and, and Crystal mentioned it, you know, very um, el- succinctly there, and I don't know if anybody else would have picked it up, is you have to be genuine. You have to be honest. You have to be present. You have to be real. You don't want your partner to pick up on any sense of frustration or, you know, rushing, you know, hurry up, just get through the story. No, 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 no. Oh, that is really a very prominent spot where a masculine and feminine are going to have a huge breakdown and some long lasting hurt feelings because one of the things that a feminine needs to feel is heard and understood. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. So give your partner the time of day and take it in stride, be patient and ask them genuinely and softly with grace. And I'm telling you, not only will the story go well, but there will probably be some additional sexy time coming very shortly as well. (laughs) It all ends with sexy time for John. But it's true. 
Oh, wait a minute. I, no, I'm not saying like the, it, it ends for him all the time. But what I'm just saying is that's what he thinks about. Anyway, back to our story. So, you know, actually, I'm just going to have a little aside. It is a wonderful thing to recognize this because, you know, what you get to do is your feminine person in your relationship. If you're the masculine, you now get to sit back, not have to remember all the people's names in the office that she works with and all the people that were in the lunchroom that day and then what they were wearing and what they were having for lunch. You don't have to remember it. But now you get to appreciate that she's got all these berry markers and the reason that she's sharing them with you is because she trusts you and she loves you. Yeah. Or he trusts you and he loves you. So it's a beautiful thing once you begin to break down what's actually going on and then appreciate. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Mm -hmm. Now to discuss some of the things that happen when your femininity might break down. Picture that precise moment when you become tense from an argument, a disagreement, or when you're hurt by someone you love. Are you able to identify that period where you switch to a masculine state? It's as if you feel you want to contend with them like a boxing match. Some of the things you might notice, you probably cross your arms and start to close off. You may match your partner's vocabulary and maybe even vocalize louder because they are. And you might even try to intimidate your partner and try to overcome them with hurtful words. Now I know this feels right to match your opponent when you're having a discussion that's maybe getting tense or stressful, but it's far more effective to take a step back and use your feminine characteristics to solve an issue. So one thing you can do is gently take their hand in yours and say something like, it seems like you're frustrated or something. Why don't we sit down and figure this out? Yeah, and and just as a blessing for everybody out there, you might not be able to get to that spot immediately because you might need time. There might be some some hurt feelings that you have to process and take a few minutes. So just use the care process that we talked about. But when you get back to that point or when you're able to do it, yes, have some have some you know gentle gestures and really just come at it kindly. It goes a really long way. Yeah, and I I definitely agree that it might feel almost impossible sometimes to get to that point really quickly. But if you're one of the lucky ones out there where you can kind of take in your femininity and realize that it's a strength of yours instead of something that you have to contend with. So just because I have the opportunity to have my husband sitting right here while I'm doing this episode... What have you seen that I have done that was a feminine approach to something that we've dealt with? A specific event doesn't come to mind, you know, immediately, but it's, it's these images I have in my head of what you do in those moments. And and they're, they're very present because it happens so much. And I, I've learned to just stand back and smile and admire it because it really means a lot to me. And what Crystal will typically do is she doesn't uh, she doesn't give a huge amount of like berry markers like she, we were talking about before in storytelling, but what she'll do is she gets very flowy and and it's a word she used many times previously in this episode and I've used it and we use it together to describe what she does, and you'll probably recognize this in your own partner or yourself. She physically starts to move, her hands will move, and I don't mean like you know like an old school Italian family where it's like hey. I don't mean like that. I don't mean like, you know, hey, Bison. But I mean like she just, she's just in a rhythm is the best way that I can say it. She's kind of in a rhythm like a dance. Like you're not talking about me using my hands just to express myself. Well, that's part of it. Yeah, but it's the way you use your hands to express yourself. They're kind of in sync and, and you're leaning forward, whether you're talking to a friend or whether you're explaining something to somebody and you just, I can see the energy just exuding from you and you're super pumped and you do use more words for sure because you want to get through and, and, and you're really in that moment of your of embracing your feminine um, and it's like the moment never ends, you know, and, and it's cool to watch her because she's so soft and her face fills with energy and her cheeks rise and they get a little more color and glow. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. I think you're making me blush. Well, that must be your feminine coming out. Well, moving on, (laughs) 
Um, so uh, I'm going to be discussing a few specific feminine traits. We've already discussed a few, but characteristically, people with a feminine energy tend to use my words, which is what we've talked about. Yes, we just basically talk more. Um, but it can also <laughs> it can also be useful when we're connecting with emotions or with other people or we're working through things in life. And one of the ways that we do this, and I'm sure that many people out there are going to resonate with this. Some may not, some men or women who are, are feminine to their core. I call it blowing it up. So as I mentioned in our last episode in Emotionally Intelligent Men, we have the tendency as feminines to blow things up a little bit bigger than they actually are. I, I really don't want to interrupt you. I just I just maybe want to give my two cents really quick. Blowing it up to me has like a negative connotation. I think how I view it just for people out there is like zooming in like a magnifying glass, you know? Oh, yeah, no, I can see that. You You describe it however you want. I just, I don't want people out there to think like, that feminines exaggerate and over embellish because that's not what we're talking about. It's just adding a greater level of detail. It's the fine print on those agreements online that say, please scroll down to, and then click no, next. No, those are boring. <laughs> no one ever reads those. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I don't mean because it's boring, but it's I would need an entire lifetime in addition to mine if I read all of the terms of agreement. <laughs> oh, you totally just like... Yeah, you, he tries to stick up for me and then just puts me in the the service agreement. <laughs> Way to go. It's better than Okay, I'm taking back this conversation. All right. All right, so back to blowing it up. <laughs> Sounds very masculine too. Exactly. Oh, I'm not very good at doing a blowing up sound. <laughs> <laughs> that was a blowing up sound if you wanted to know. <laughs> anyway, so what I mean is when something happens or even if something could happen, that is also key. We as feminines will all will often talk about it as if it was actually going on or if it was far worse than it actually is. Now, this can also be used to a fault, but when it's used with focus and thoughtfulness, we have the ability to reflect and analyze and to come up with conclusions very quickly. Now, the way I normally describe it, I know that you were talking about fine print, the boring stuff that you need a magnifying glass. No, no, no. I'm continuing talking. No, zooming in. Yeah. Okay. You should stop zooming in. <laughs> okay. So what I actually describe it as, it's like having a brainstorming poster that you used to make in school. Ah. The one bubble in the middle is what the you know incident or the action or whatever it is that happened or that could have happened. And then all of a sudden, there's a million spider legs coming out from these with explanations and thoughts and possible actions. Do we get the smelly markers? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Those big fat ones. Yes. When John and I first discovered this in our own relationship, he actually used to call it spider webs. It's yeah. true. And so he'd be like, okay, I, I'm not following. I feel like you're spider webbing right now. And he'd be like, pew, pew. Like, like <laughs> Spider-Man, like shooting from his wrists. So, you know, like blowing it up or magnifying or brainstorming. It's a really cool technique. I call it a technique. We're not really meaning to do this, but I guess more of a characteristic that your partner, once they understand it, like we said before, they can start to appreciate it and we can start to appreciate it in ourselves. The next characteristic we've already discussed, but I just want to kind of give it its own field here. So being in the state of flow as a feminine is experienced when you just let go. When you go inside and you, you know, basically I almost want to describe it as you become passionate about yourself. You can start to be proud of yourself, happy with yourself, content, peaceful, and you can just let go. And you have a flowy speech where you talk with ideas flowing out of you. And especially when it's something you're passionate about, you just basically flow. You're like a river and you're just very natural. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a feminine, but going through this, you do learn a lot about this. So I think what also comes to mind is you're probably not concerned with other people's opinions or judgments. You're not lost in the thought of possibility of what might happen what might they be thinking about me? What are the possible, you know, scary outcomes that are very, very far-fetched and probably never going to happen, but maybe they could? 
You're not considering any of those. You're just very present. So just to recap a little bit again about flow, you know, pay attention to your partner, pay attention to yourself. If you really look for the nuances and the subtleties, you'll probably see that you or your partner already do this. So embrace those moments, figure out what stimulates that, that, you know, that energy, that flow, and then help nurture that some more. Because when a feminine feels heard, like their opinion matters, like their side of the story matters like they can trust you when they feel understood and it doesn't mean that you have to you know understand what they're going through but when you lean in when you nod your head when you're there and you're present and you're embracing their moment and you're you know just going along for the ride they will love you for it they will absolutely love you for it that in turn will help them support you as a masculine and it'll also give you a huge amount of closure as a masculine watching this feminine when you realize you don't have to remember everything. You don't have to solve their problems. And remember, they're not problems, they're challenges. So don't treat them like problems. When you treat things like problems, you want them to go away. But it's not your job to get rid of them. They just want to share them with you. And pay attention again to the subtleties that your partner does. Whether it's words, actions, you know, do they dress differently? Do they stand differently when they're really flowing? I, I bet you they do. Yeah, I I actually have to say when John is standing back and just and just appreciating when I'm flowing in my feminine state, I actually I don't even know if I'm going to get this across properly, but I feel cute. I feel very cute. I feel like he's st- looking at me and I'm just totally in this state of being who I'm supposed to be and yeah, it's just a really cool feeling. Now, really, what do you do if you do not feel like you were in touch with your own feminine state and you're feeling a bit lost? What if you hear us saying all of this on this podcast episode and you're like, I think I'm feminine. I don't really know. I don't feel like I'm in touch. And maybe what could your masculine partner do to support you to be more feminine so that you can be more successful in being an emotionally intelligent feminine. Well, to begin, maybe you could share this podcast with your masculine partner so that he can also identify some of the things so that he can, he or she can actually watch you, see what it is that you're doing, and uh, maybe give some feedback. In addition, mm, things that you can do yourself Practice doing things that make you feel uniquely you. Maybe you like to practice yoga or a sport. Maybe, like me, you like to draw or paint or sculpt things. Do something that's creative that you can actually create with your own hands. Or dance. Mm, I'm actually, I'm coming to that. Dance alone in your underwear to your favorite song. And I mean like full out screaming in your hairbrush or your toothbrush and like it's you're like it's your last day on earth or your house is on fire that when I picture it is like feminine to the core I like it yeah right yeah I don't remember what I'm sure there's a dozen movies that have this clip and I just can't think of any right now no, but honestly, like when you think of it and you, you see in your mind, you see this, maybe a, a, a feminine, I think probably in a movie would most likely be a girl, but. Pretty woman. I'm sure, I'm sure there was a scene ah, in there. Where she's like, oh no, she's in the bathtub with all the bubbles and her hair's all like toppled on top of her head and <laughs> she's like singing or something. Yeah, 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 she's singing. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's totally it. That's very feminine. So these are some things that you can do to kind of help get back to feeling feminine right down to your core. Some other things that you can do are recognize the way that you explain things that you're on fire about, things that you're passionate about, you know, be present when you're, when you're explaining them, but you know, actually be proud and excited when you are, because that will help you get more in touch with it. Talk to your partner, like I said, and maybe they can give you some feedback because I know that John and I talk about this quite a bit and he's been able to give me feedback like, oh, I'm just enjoying watching you right now. You're just very flowy. You're just very, you know, in 
you know, in your, in your heart and you're just flowing the way that you always do. And I just love it. So it's, it's really great for him to pinpoint that because when he verbalizes it, I can then just kind of take it in and realize that these are the things that make me more feminine and I can, you know, practice them more. Uh, Yeah. And encourage your partner to practice them because what I can say from, from practicing this with Crystal and what I can say from watching other people do this is when your partner embraces who they really are at their core, your ign- your passion is ignited for that person. You're turned on, not just sexually, but you're like, holy crap, I love this person or I want to be with this person or, oh, now I remember why this person means so much to me. And you're drawn closer and closer to them because it's true. They're very congruent with who they are at their core. When they're incongruent with who they are, when they're trying to you know, solve an issue with a different energy. When when you're masculine and they convert from feminine to masculine, you feel the furthest away from them. You feel like you're butting heads. You feel like... Like almost repelled, right? Like yeah, you're repe- going the opposite direction. Yeah, repelled is a good word because you're almost like disgusted. And sometimes it's hard... I meant repelled like magnetized. Oh. <laughs> Repelling in the opposite direction. But you know what? I understand. I feel the same way. Yeah, Yeah. no, no. I mean, I do. I mean, that's sincerely disgusted because sometimes it's a little confusing to understand why you're so you know, upset at your partner because maybe it's not anything specifically that they've done to you. But maybe, maybe they're masculine, right? And they're very typically very confident and action-oriented and they just... Nothing can stop them. But then all of a sudden a situation has come and they're very meek and they're, you know, kind of indecisive and, uh, you know, uh, low energy. And you're just like, who the heck is this? This isn't you. Mm-hmm. you it's, it's, disgusted might be a little bit of a strong word, but, you know, it's not, it's not who they are and it's not who... Th- you turned off? Turned off is a very good... Yeah. Yeah, I think go. I like turned off. Yeah. Yeah. You know, really to summarize it, if... All of this doesn't make sense. If everything we've spoken of, you're just like out in left field. Listen to this one piece. When you first met your partner, you definitely were opposite energies. What did you do at the beginning of your relationship that attracted your partner? Those are the things that you continue to do. You know, obviously your relationship, you know, progressive progresses. It matures over time. But if you do the things that you did in the beginning of your relationship, you will have that passion. It will reignite. And then you can go from there. You can get back in touch with the things that you um, that make you uniquely feminine or uniquely masculine. Yeah, that's beautiful. I like that. That's mm-hmm. very well said. Wonderful. Everyone, share this with someone out there who rather is, you know, maybe needing to get more in touch with their feminine side, working on their emotional intelligence. Or share it with someone that has brown hair or blonde hair or any hair at all, actually, for that matter. Or no hair. Oh, no hair, even better. Yeah. Share it with the people in your life who tell so many details in a story that you are already regretting asking them how their day was because you're like, oh God, I only have five minutes, not 15. And Janice is going to take 15 minutes. Actually, but after you listen to this episode, you will understand we get to now appreciate Janice. She tells a lot of little details. She tells you exactly uh, all the cat's names in the story uh, that she had read about. But now you can appreciate that these are her berry markers and you don't have to remember any of them. True. Just also be mindful that you only have five minutes, not 15. So Yeah, you may have to just maybe do a precursor like, Janet, got five minutes. Go. <laughs> Go with the cat story. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for stopping by. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to listen to our podcast. We are having a blast. Thank you so much, guys. Go out there and have a world-class day. And stay connected. We started this podcast because we are both extremely passionate about personal growth and development. Without fully understanding the benefits at the time, we actually began seeing a counselor at the beginning of our relationship to gain tools and learn more about ourselves. That eventually led to multi-day workshops, physical books, audio books, and as many other resources as we could get our hands on because we saw such massive results. But we want to take you on a ride and share some of our most important lessons and discoveries that have made the biggest impact to us. Whether you're single, looking for love, or have already found that special person, 
We aim to be the number one resource to help you design your world-class relationship. For more information on topics and to join the conversation, please visit us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash world-class relationship. Join us next time for another episode of Intimacy Exposed. Intimacy Exposed.